exactly the same. Everything, all the rules are the same. Do you observe the question is do you observe the new moon day exactly the same way you observe the Sabbath? Does it have the same rule? Is it the same way? Is the Sabbath and the new moon day exactly the same way? The same way you keep the Sabbath, you don't go to work, you don't cook. Is that the same rule? What are the rules that apply to the new moon day? How do you observe the new moon day? That's a good question. Um no, there are there's a difference between the Sabbath and the new moon. There's a difference between the Sabbath and the new moon. Uh, they are not the same. Uh, they are, there are three types of days. Okay, first of all, let's start from understanding the three types of days. Let's start from understanding there are three types of days. New moon day, work day, and Sabbath day. New moon day, work day, and Sabbath day. Sabbath day is you don't go to work. You don't cook. You worship, you rest. You don't go to work. You don't work in the house. You worship and you rest. You don't cook on the Sabbath day. Um, you don't travel on the Sabbath day. You can read Jubilees chapter 50 to see all the things you can do on the Sabbath day. Jubilees chapter 50. If you don't have the book of book Jubilee, you can Google it. You can Google the book of Jubilee. And you can read all the laws about keeping the Sabbath. Jubilees chapter 50, you can type in into Google. Jubilees chapter 50. And you Google it and then you read it and you see all the laws about keeping the Sabbath. But New Moon Day is different. New Moon Day is usually at the beginning of the month, of course. The last day or the first day after the last Sabbath. The first day after the last sabbath new moon day is at that time that the moon is dark the moon is 100 percent dark there's no light in the moon and then that evening the light will come into the moon that's what it says in uh, enoch chapter 77 14. enoch 77 14 again if you don't have the book of enoch you can google it type it type it into google and you can read it enoch 77 14. Enoch 77 14 tells you when the new moon day is. New moon day is that day when there's no light in the moon. All the light in the moon is gone. So the moon is dark. That's the new moon day. And then that evening, the light comes into the moon. That very first tiny light that comes in, that very first crescent of the moon, it happens on the evening of the new moon day. Then the next day, is the first work day of the week. That's the way it works. So new moon day is when the moon is 100% dark. There's no light in that new moon. And then, and then in the evening, the first tiny crescent comes into the moon. And if you are not able to see it like today, if, if on the new moon day, you couldn't see the first crescent of the moon, then that means that the next day is also a new moon day. And for sure, the second day, the second new moon day, because there's two days new moon day sometimes. There's one day new moon sometimes and there's two days new moon day sometimes. When you come up at the end of the month, when you come up at the beginning of the month on the new moon day, you will either have a one day new moon or you have a two days new moon. So when the moon is completely dark, that's a new moon day. On that day in the evening, light will come into the moon and the next day will be the first work day of the week. This is how you determine the new moon day. This is what we see, what we see with our eyes. That's also what it says in the book of Enoch that happens on the new moon day. So that book of Enoch tells you exactly what we witness with our eyes today. That's the new moon day. Some people will say that full moon is the new moon. That's nonsense. There's nowhere that scripture will tell you that full moon is the new moon. Full moon is in the, mid in the middle of the month. Full moon is in the middle of the month. Full moon is not the new moon. New moon is when the moon is completely dark. And then the first tiny crescent, which is new, comes into the moon. That is the beginning of the month. That's the new moon day. Full moon is not the new moon. I have to clarify that. So in a new moon day, which is the day after the last part of the month, we can look at the scripture to see what they did. So in that way, we can understand what you do on the new moon day, how to observe the new moon day. 
we can look at uh, Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1 to 12. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1 to 12, you see that on the new moon day, they went for worship. They went to worship the Most High on the new moon day. So they went for worship and they worshiped the Most High from evening until midday. That's Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1 to 12. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1 to 12. They went to worship the Most High and they worship until evening until midday. That worship was on, from evening until midday. That's how long they worshiped the Most High. And they were worshiping and they read from the book of the law. They read from the book of the law. That was what they were doing on the new moon day. They read from the book of the law and the people were being taught the law. They learned from the law. Please read Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 1 to 8. I'm sorry, chapter 8 verse 1 to 12. If you, if you have time, read the book of Nehemiah. The book of Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 1 to 12. And you see what they did there. That, on the new moon day, they worshipped. They worshipped on the new moon day. And what they did is that they were there to worship Yah from morning until evening. They worshipped the Most High from morning until evening on the new moon day. Yah was worshipped from morning until evening. I'm sorry, not until evening. Um, they worshipped the Most High from morning until midday. And they read from the book of the law. And then after that, after that, they went home. So that's one of the first places you see uh, how they worshipped, what they did on the new moon day. They gathered together and they worshipped the Most High on the new moon day. And also in Ezekiel chapter 46, verse 1 to 3. Ezekiel chapter 46, the Most High told us to open up the worship center. To open up his house on the Sabbath day and on the new moon day. That's Ezekiel chapter 46 verse 1 to 3. Ezekiel 46 verse 1 to 3. We're told to open up the worship place on the new moon day. So that the people of the land can come and worship. Ezekiel chapter 46 verse 1 to 3. And then in Nehemiah chapter 8 verse, uh, verse 12. 1 to 12. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 1 to 12. You see that. The people of the land went and they worshipped uh, in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1 to 12. So, and then after they finished worshipping, um, which was from morning until midday, the Levites told them to go home to eat their food, to eat their food and to basically rejoice that that day was a holy day. They were told to rem remember those who are less privileged, to remember those who are hungry, to share their food with those who are hungry. On that new moon day. So they went home. That's what we see in, in, in Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 1 to 12. We also see. We also see uh, in. Um, 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 20. 1 Samuel chapter 20. We saw that Saul and Jonathan. They sat down to eat the new moon feast. Because you eat, as you saw in Nehemiah chapter 8, they went home and they ate. They were told to go home and eat and remember those who are less privileged. In 1 Samuel chapter 20, we see that the Israelite, uh, Saul and Jonathan and David was supposed to be there. They ate on the new moon day. And then what happens is that in the evening, like it says in Psalm 81 verse 3, Psalm 81 verse 3, in the evening of the new moon, you go out and you look for the moon. You know, so it says in Psalm 81 verse 3, blow the trumpet on the new moon. Blow the trumpet on the new moon, Psalm 81 verse 3. Psalm 81 verse 3. So what we do is that we, in the morning of the new moon, we wake up, we shower, we put on our clothes, we go to the house of Yah, we worship Yah. After worshiping Yah, we go back home and then we eat. We eat and we celebrate and eat and thank the Most High. And then in the evening of the moon, evening of the of the new moon in the evening we go outside and look towards the west we look towards the west because the moon is dark in the day of the new moon the moon is dark just like it says in the book of enoch then in the evening when you go out in that evening of the new moon you look towards the west typically you look 
as soon as the sun goes down, you cannot see the moon. You can't see that first crescent, that first sliver of the moon. You cannot see it when the sun is up. So typically, when the sun goes down, around 6 p.m. or something like that in your area, when this, whenever the sun goes down, that's when you want to look. So you'll be outside and you're looking towards the west. Towards the west. As soon as the sun goes down, after maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes, the sun goes down. Just keep looking up. Looking up, looking up. Go out on time and look up towards the west. You should be able to see the first crescent of the moon. If you see it that evening, that means, that means you have one day new moon day. That means that you have one day new moon day. Then the next day, you go to your walk. You walk for six days and then you rest on the seventh day and keep your Sabbath. You walk six days, you rest on the seventh day. You walk six days and you rest on the seventh day. But in the evening of the new moon, if you are not able to see the moon that evening, like this evening, today is a new moon day. If you go out in the west and you look towards the west and you're not able to see the moon, you had a clear sky. The sky is clear. There was no cloud coverage towards the west. The sun goes down and you're not able to see the moon. That means that you're going to have a two days new moon day. That means that the next day will also be a new moon day. The second day, the next day will be a new moon day. This is exactly what happened in the book of Samuel, First Samuel chapter, chapter 20. First Samuel chapter 20. You see that they had a two days new moon day. They sat down and ate twice. So if you're not able to see the first crescent of the moon in the evening of the new moon, just like it says in the book of Enoch 77, 14. In some book of Enoch, some book, you see this in chapter 78. So the same thing you see in chapter 77. In some book of Enoch, some translations, you will see this in chapter 78. So when you see that, let that not surprise you. So I'm just saying this, just in case, if you go and look in the book of Enoch, in chapter 77, verse 4, if you are not able to see this information, flip to the next chapter, because some translation do put it in chapter 78. So when you look in Enoch chapter 77, verse 14, Enoch 77, 14, and you're not able to see this, flip to the next chapter chapter 77 chapter 78 you should be able to see this information and it tells you what happens on the new moon day so on the new moon day in the evening if you go out the moon is supposed to be dark on that day if you go out in the evening and you look towards the west and you're not able to see the first crescent of the moon the very first tiny crescent the first sliver of the moon if you don't see it on the new moon day that means that the next day is also a new moon day that means you have two days new moon day, just like they had in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 20. That was a two days new moon day that they had there. Two days new moon day. So the second day, which is the, 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 a new moon day also, because you're not able to see the first crescent of the moon the day before. That second day, for sure, guaranteed, that second new moon day in the evening, you will surely see the moon. Because at that point, the moon is the moon is at this point big enough for you to see it. Like tonight, we're not going to see the moon because it's too tiny. I looked on the app. You can download the lunar app. You can go use your phone and go to, if you're using iPhone, you go to App Store. If you're using um, Android, you go to Android Store, uh, uh, to the Play Store, Google Play Store, and you can look for these apps on you. Or, or, or they, they have some apps that you can download the Lunar apps. Just type in Lunar app, and you can download an app that will tell you what the moon is doing, and then you can see what the moon looks like in real time. I I don't advise you to rely on that app. That app is simply to show you what the moon is doing. Sometimes they are not accurate. I have to warn you. Sometimes they are not very accurate uh, in terms of you can't rely on it to keep the Sabbath. You cannot rely. But that app, those apps will help you to be able to have an idea of what the moon is doing. So I recommend downloading them and just looking at, using it to find out what the moon is doing. That's all. 
but don't rely on them too much. You still have to go out on the evening of the new moon to see if the moon came out. If the moon comes out in the evening of the new moon, then that means that seven days from that day will be the next, the next Sabbath. The new moon begins the month. Seven days from the new moon. So let's say today is Monday and today is a new moon day. That means that seven days from today will be the, the first Sabbath of the month. And the moon will be half, 50% full on seven days from the new moon day. Seven days from the new moon day, the moon will look 50% full. That is your Sabbath right there. That's how you determine your Sabbath. Seven days from that, the moon will look 100% full. That's your seventh, second Sabbath of the month. You have a full moon on the second Sabbath of the month, on the 15th. Seven days after that, you have the, the third Sabbath of the month. The moon will look uh, 50 the moon will look fifty uh, percent full again. Seven days after that, the moon will look tiny, very tiny moon. That will be the last Sabbath of the month. So if today is a new moon day and today is Monday, that means that the next four Mondays will be the Sabbath. If today is a new moon day and today is Monday, that means that the next four Mondays will be the Sabbath. If today is a new moon day and today is Tuesday, that means that the next four, next four Tuesdays will be the Sabbath, the real Sabbath. And seven days from today, the moon will be 50% full, half moon. Seven days after that, the moon will look 100% full, full moon. Seven days after that, the moon will look 50% full, the last quarter. Seven days after that, the moon will look uh, very tiny, last crescent of the moon. The day after that is automatically a new moon day. And then you wake up in the morning, you go and worship the Most High, you shower, you put on your clothes, you go to the house of Yah, you worship Yah. If you don't have a house of Yah to go to, you can stay in your house and observe it yourself. If you have a congregation, you can join them. If you have people online that you worship with, you can join them online. If you have nobody to worship with, you stay in your house. No going out on that day. You stay in your house on that day and worship the Most High. So you do that in the morning time like we see in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse uh, 1 to 12. You, st you do that in your house. You, you worship here from morning till noon. Then you go, you, you eat your food. You eat your food if you can. You remember those who are less privileged and help them you eat your food and then in the evening you go out and look for the uh, first crescent of the of the moon when the sun goes down in the evening as the sun is going down you go out and make sure you have no trees you have nothing that will block your view no tall buildings or trees that will block your view from looking down towards the west if you have a good a good a good clear sky there is no cloud coverage you look towards the west you, sh you should be able to see the moon in the evening of the, la of the new moon day. If you see the moon, that means that the next day you go on to work. That's your first work day of the week. The next day after the new moon day is the, your first work day of the week. You go on and you go for your business and you go to your work or to wherever you have to go on that day after the new moon day. If you have cloud coverage and you're not able to see the moon on the new moon day, for whatever reason... It was raining or there was cloud coverage on the new moon day that's fine all praises to our heavenly father for technology because you can go to places like the truth of yahweh you can google new moon report uh, and go to look online look on the internet new moon report look for website where people do report that they saw the moon or not there's a couple of good websites one of them is the truth of yahweh you can simply go to google you go to Google and you type in New Moon Report. If you Google New Moon Report, I think it's the first or the second link that says Truth of Yahweh. New Moon Report, Truth of Yahweh. Is, the, 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 the website is from a, a group known as Truth of Yahweh. You click on that, they should be able to tell you if they, because they get reports from different parts of the world. People report to them if they saw the moon or not. On the New Moon Day, on, the, on that same day that you're looking for the moon, this, this particular website gets reports from different parts of the world when pe people are reporting to them if they saw the moon or not. So if you are not able to see the moon on the new moon day, because you have to be able to see the first crescent of the moon, you cannot rely on the app 
or website you have to be able to go out and see for yourself but if you're not able to see because it was raining or you had cloud coverage then you can go to a place like truth of yahweh and look and see if they got if they got report that people saw the moon if if if, if you if there's if you are able you know if people saw the moon that means that the next day is it's your first work day of the week the next day is the first work day of the week and you go on to your business and you go to your work. If you're not able to see the moon on the evening of the new moon day, that means that the next day is also a new moon day. Then you have to worship again, eat your food, relax, help the needy. And then in the evening, you go out and you look for the, the first crescent of the moon. The second day of the month, I, almost, I guarantee you for sure, on the second day of the month, you will definitely see the first crescent of the moon because at that point the moon is now big enough uh, for you to be able to see this is how it works so we have to do this we have to observe the new moon day because the most high said so we have to observe it and even in isaiah chapter 66 isaiah chapter 66 it says that uh, that as the new heaven Isaiah 66, 22 and 23. Isaiah 66, 22 and 23. That as the new heaven and the new earth that he will create will last, that from one new moon to the next, to one Sabbath to the next, that all flesh will come and worship before him. From one new moon to the next and one Sabbath to the next, as the new heaven and the new earth that he will create will last. So, even in the kingdom, we are going to be acknowledging New Moon Day. We're going to be worshiping the Most High on the New Moon Day. That's a fact, according to Isaiah chapter 66, verse 22 and 23. Isaiah 66, 22 and 23. So, uh, it's, it's something that we have to do right now because our Heavenly Father told us to. So, on the New Moon Day, that's how you observe the New Moon Day. And I had to do this this way to use scriptures to answer you this uh, this question and to show you in scriptures the things that they did first you have ezekiel chapter 46 ezekiel 46 verse 1 to 3 where the most high say that the 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 worship center the sanctuary his house should be open on the sabbath days and on the new moon days and the people of the land are supposed to come and worship on the new moon day that's Ezekiel chapter 46, verse 1 to 3. Then we have Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1 to 12. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1 to 12, where you see the people of the land coming to worship the Most High on the new moon day. They were there from morning until noon, and they worshiped the Most High and they read from the book of the law. And then they were told by the Levite to go home and eat their feast, go home and eat their food but to also remember those who are less privileged who may not have food to eat and then in the evening you go out we also have uh first samuel chapter 20 that shows this with uh david and saul and uh, and jonathan they had a two days new moon days in that case because according to first samuel chapter 20 they sat down to eat and Saul did not say any, say anything when he saw that David's seat was open. Saul did not say anything. But on the second new moon day, on the second day of the month, like the first new moon day is the first day of the month. The second new moon day is the second day of the month. So Saul did not say anything on the first new moon day. On the second new moon day, he realized that David was, David was not there also. So that was when he began to ask his son, where is David, the son of Jesse? And Jonathan told him, you know, so that's what you see there in that scripture. And also, I cannot forget um, Colossians chapter 6, chapter 2.16. Colossians 2.16. We see that Paul, the apostle, please read from verse 1. Colossians chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 16. Colossians chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 16. If you read Colossians chapter 2, from verse 1 to verse 16, you see that in verse 8, Paul was warning the people of Colossia, the brethren in Colossia, Paul was warning them to not let anybody condemn you, judge you for observing the Sabbath days, the feast days, and the new moon days. But today, Christians have taken that place and they have twisted it and telling you, look, look over here. Paul was telling them to not let anybody condemn you for not observing those days oh my goodness that's not true look at verse 8 
Look at verse 8. Verse 8 gives you idea of what Paul was talking about. So Paul was telling them, the brethren, the, the believers, Paul was telling them, do not let anybody use the philosophies of this world. The philosophies of this world to condemn you, to judge you. Don't let anybody stop, stop you from observing those days. Don't let anybody judge you for doing that. Or condemn you. Because we have to observe those days. And Paul observed those days. You see in the book of Acts, how he said, I'm going to go back to Jerusalem to go observe uh, the upcoming feast. That's what Paul says in the book of Acts. This is very clear. So Paul himself was observing these days. There's no way he can tell you, oh, I'm not going to observe those days or, or don't let anybody judge you uh, for not observing those days. That is the opposite of what Paul said. That is the opposite. And it's disgusting that these wicked people will twist his word and turn it upside down. So that is not, that is not what Paul was saying. So, um, these are scriptures that shows that it's very clear that we are to observe the new moon day. And it also gives us information on how to observe the new moon day. We were told how to observe it and how to observe these things. So, if you go to Acts of Apostle, I want to show you Paul the Apostle, that he observed these feast days. Look at Acts of Acts of Apostles chapter 18. Acts chapter 18. Here is the words of Paul. I'm going to read something that Paul said about the feast days. So how can he be observing it and then he tell people not to observe it? That's absolute nonsense. Christianity is one of the... No, sorry. Uh, let, me, let me say that right. Sorry, I said one of the. It's not one of the. It's not one of the. Christianity is the worst pagan religion in the history of mankind because they take the scripture and they twist it so where paul tells you to do something they will say oh he said we shouldn't do it where the Messiah says to do something they will twist it and turn it upside down christianity is the worst pagan religion in the history of mankind and if you are a christian and you are in christianity you are a fool you need to get out get out now while you still can look at acts chapter 18 Acts chapter 18, verse 20. Uh, look at Acts, Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18, verse 21. But I'm going to start. I'm going to start before that, so we can understand what Paul was saying here. Before I get to verse 21, uh, I'm going to start from verse. Let's see. From verse 18. Let's start from verse 18, so we can kind of have an idea. When you get a chance, read the whole chapter. So you make sure that I'm not twisting it. So Acts chapter 18 from verse 18. Acts 18 from verse 18. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while, and then took his leave of the brethren, and sailed thence into Syria. And with him, Priscilla and Aquila, having shown his head, in Kant's century, for he, had, for he had a vow. That's a vow of the Nazarene, according to the book of Numbers. When you take that vow, when you're done, when you, when you complete the vow, you shave your hair. That's for the men, according to the law in the book of Numbers. When you take the vow of the, uh, vow of the Nazarene, when you're done, you shave your hair. So he had taken that vow and he completed the vow and he shaved his hair. Uh, so in verse 19, Acts chapter 18, verse 19, Acts 18, 19, and he came to Ephesus and left them there. But he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Yahudis. Verse 20, when they desired him to tarry longer, longer time with them, he, consent, he consented not. Verse 21, but bade them farewell, meaning, bye, I have to see you later. I have to go now. Verse 21, but bade them farewell because they wanted him to stay longer. According to verse 20, when they desired him to stay longer with them, he consented not. He said, no, I have to go. Verse 21, Acts 18, 21, but bade them farewell, saying, I must by all means, and I'm reading from King James. This is King James. 
but bade them farewell. Acts 18, 21. But bade them farewell, saying, I must by all means keep this feast that cometh in Jerusalem. But I will return again unto you if Elohim wills, if God, God wills. And he sailed from Ephesus. Now, some translations actually remove that part. Look this up in multiple translation. Acts 18, 21. Read this in multiple translation. Some translation actually took that little part out. So they will say what you will see in some translation, especially the modern translation, the modern ones. What you will see there is that Paul said, I have to go. I will come back to you later. That's it. So that part where Paul said in Acts 18.21, Acts 18.21, that part that he said, I must by all means keep this upcoming feast in Jerusalem. Some translation took that little part out. They actually took it out. So what you're going to see is that Paul will say, Oh, I have to go. I will come back to you later. But he doesn't tell you why. But in King James, he tells you why. Let me look at this translation right here. Because this is one of the modern ones. Acts 18.21 And I would like to give you this as an assignment. Check it out. Look at it. Look at multiple translations. Paul told them, I have to keep this upcoming feast in Jerusalem. Uh, that's in King James. In other new translation, they took that out. So as a Christian, if you read it from NI, NIV or all this other modern translation, you will not understand why, why Paul said that he has to go. Now, why will they take that out? If he says, I have to go because I have to be in Jerusalem so I can keep, all the, keep the upcoming feast. Well, Christians don't believe in keeping the feast. So you can understand why they have to take that out. May curse be upon these people. And all those that don't want to keep the law because that's what you see in the book of Deuteronomy. In the book of Deuteronomy, it's very clear that anyone that refuses to follow the law, cause will be upon them. That's what it says. That's not what I'm saying. You may be shocked that I just said that. I'm just quote, quoting the scripture in the book of Deuteronomy. I'm just quoting the scripture. It says that anyone that refuses to keep the law may cause be upon them. So to you, you may think, oh, this brother is, wow, man, he's so mean. He's so rude. He's so mean. Look at Deuteronomy chapter uh, 27. Deuteronomy chapter 27 and start from verse 11. It gives you all the causes that will be upon people. Deuteronomy chapter 27 from verse 11. Deuteronomy chapter 11, chapter 27 from verse 11 all the way to the end. Deuteronomy chapter 27 from verse 11 and then look at verse 26. Deuteronomy chapter 27 verse 26. Deuteronomy, I'm going to read a couple of, a couple of courses before we get down to, to the end of the verse. But you can read Deuteronomy chapter 27 from verse 11 and you see all the courses. Deuteronomy chapter 27, I'm going to start from verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 27. And this is part of the law of Moses, right? That we're told to follow. Deuteronomy chapter 27 from verse 18. Cursed be upon anyone who misleads a blind person on the road, and all the people shall say, Amen. Verse 19. Cursed be upon anyone who deprives an alien, the orphan, or and, and the widow of justice, and all the people shall say, Amen. Verse 20. Cursed be upon anyone who lies with his father's wife. Uh, because he has violated his father's right, and all the people, all the people, shall say Amen. Verse twenty-one: Curse be upon anyone who lies with any, who lies with animal. Curse be upon anyone who lies with, with any animal. All the people shall say Amen. Verse twenty-two: Curse be upon anyone 
who lies with his sister, whether the daughter of his father or the daughter of his mother. All the people shall say, Amen. Verse 23, All the cause be upon anyone who lies with his mother-in-law. All the people shall say, Amen. Verse 24, Cause be upon anyone who strike down a neighbor in secret. All the people shall say, Amen. Verse 25, Cause be upon anyone who takes bribe, who takes a bribe to shed innocent blood. All the people shall say, Amen. Verse 26, Cause be upon anyone who does not uphold the words of this law by observing them. All the people shall say, Amen. So when I say, Cause be upon anyone that refuses to keep the law, you may think, oh, that's so harsh. That's Deuteronomy 27, 26. Deuteronomy 27, 26. Deuteronomy 27, 26. Cause be upon anyone who does not uphold the words of this law by observing them. All the people shall say, Amen. So anybody that refuses to keep the law of the Most High, there's a cause upon them. They have cause upon them. So, those that took out certain things and twist certain things cause to be upon them because they are making it they are making it difficult for people to observe the law of the most high so if you look at multiple translations you see that in acts chapter 18 verse 21 acts 18 21 for example i'm going to read here in this translation right here it says in acts 18 21 but taking leave his but taking leave taking leave of them he said I will return to you if God wills. Then he set, then he set sail from Ephesus. Like this translation right there, right here, they took it out. This is new, the new reverse standard version. They took that out. In King James, it tells you exactly the reason why, exactly the reason why Paul left them. Paul was very clear. Sorry, I have to go. I'm going to have to go because I have to go back to Jerusalem. I need to observe, I must, by all means, observe the upcoming feast. I must, by all means, observe the upcoming feast. But these wicked sons and daughters of devils have twisted his word. And that area, that part where he says that I have to go back to Jerusalem because I need to observe the upcoming feast, they took that out to give you the impression that Paul was not keeping the law, to give you the impression that Paul was not keeping the feast, so that they will be able, when you come to, uh, to um, Colossians chapter 2, verse 16, they have twisted it to show that, oh, look over here, according to uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 16, you don't have to observe the Sabbath, you don't have to observe the law, because Paul said so. That's why they have to twist it and remove that in, King, in, in the other translations. But you can still see it in King James. So you have to make up your mind what you want to do. Do you want to continue fooling yourself, deceiving yourself, and claim, keep claiming that you don't have to keep the law? You don't have to keep the laws. You don't have to observe the Sabbath. You don't have to observe the feast. When you see that Paul himself was, was observing these things. Do you want me to show you in the book of Acts where he was observing the Sabbath? It's right there. Paul was observing the, the Sabbath days, the feast days. When they accused him of teaching against the law, when they accused Paul of teaching against the law, he denied it. Why didn't he say, actually, that's true. We don't have to keep the law. That's why I was, I was teaching against it. He didn't say that. He denied teaching against the law. Now, that could only mean one thing. Either he was lying, either he was running around the world among the Gentiles, teaching against the law, and then when he was confronted, he lied. That could be the only reasonable explanation. Why would he deny when he was confronted? When Paul was confronted, he denied it, and he proved to them that he wasn't teaching against the law. By going to the temple, to the to the uh, to the uh, the sanctuary of Yah, and he offered an animal sacrifice to prove it. He shaved his hair, completed his vow, and paid. Not only did he pay for animal sacrifice, he paid for the animal sacrifice of the other brethren. He paid for the animal sacrifices too to prove that he wasn't teaching against the law. But today, you see people that will tell you that Paul was teaching against the law, that he wasn't keeping the law. That it wasn't okay to, 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 to keep the law. 
because Paul was Paul did not keep the law. This is all lies and can only be believed by wicked people who did not want to keep the law. So when a filthy, pork-eating, wicked individual tells you that you're not under the law, under the law because Paul said so, you believe them. Why do you believe them? Why do you believe Christian pastors? Because you are wicked too. Because you don't want to keep the law. So in, Paul, in Acts chapter 21, read Acts 21. They accused Paul of teaching against the law. Why didn't he say, yes, I did? He denied it. The brethren that was around told him, we are hearing this thing that you're teaching against the law. And now that you came into Jerusalem, the rest of the Israelites are going to hear that you came back. And they may try to confront you. So, we want you to prove to them that you're not teaching against the law. Paul could have said, no, 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 brethren. Oh, no, hell no, brethren. No, 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 no. You know, you see, what you had was true. Yes, I was teaching against the law because Jesus died and was put on the cross. And we are no longer supposed to follow the law. So, I was teaching that. I respect what you're saying, but I don't really care what people say because the report you had was true. I was teaching against the law because we don't have to keep the law. That's what Paul would, should have said. But he didn't say that. When they told him, we heard that you're teaching against the law. We heard that you're teaching against the law. So, that's in Acts chapter 21. Go read it for yourself. When they told him this, He, Acts 21, 21, Acts 21, 21, Acts 21, 21, they have been told about you that you teach all the Jews living among the Gentiles to forsake Moses and that you tell them not to circumcise their children or observe the customs. Verse 22, what then is to be done? They will certainly hear that you have come. So do what we tell you. We have four men who, have, who are under a vow. That's the law, vow of the Nazarene, the one that you grow your hair when you are under. We have four men who are under a vow. Join them. Join these men. Go through the rite of purification with them. And pay for the, pay for the shaving of their hairs. Again, go back into the book of Numbers and read all the things you have to do to close that vow. You have to bring an animal and go to the priest. And then the priest will close the vow for you and you shave your hair. Why didn't Paul say, oh, no, 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 sorry, sorry, no, no. Actually, the report you had was true. Paul did not say all of that. He didn't say that. He could have said to them, that report you had that I was teaching against the law, that's true. That report that you had that I was, I was teaching against the law of Moses, that's true. Paul did not say that. Verse 24, Acts 21, 24. Join these men, go through the rite of purification with them, and pay for the, pay for the shaving of their hair, heads. Thou all will know that there is nothing in what they have been told about you, but that you yourself observe and guard the law. Paul did not say. Pew. He said nothing. These are brethren. Was telling Paul. That the rest of the people in Jerusalem. Have been hearing. That you Paul. Have been teaching people. Not to follow the law of Moses. Now that you came back into Jerusalem. These people are going to hear that you came back and there will be problem they may end up killing you so there are four people four men who took the vow of the nazarene take these men join them because paul himself took the vow so at this point he had long hair he took the vow for one year they told him take these men go with them into the house of yah 
pay for them because you, they have to bring animal. So you need to buy their own animals and go to the priest and close the, close the vow with them. They're going to shave their hair. Let Your hair is going to be shaved. Go and close the vow to, with the priest. So that everybody will see that that report they had of you was not true. That you're teaching against the law. Paul did not say a word. Paul went and did exactly what he was told. If Paul was, if Paul was teaching against the law, Paul could have said, no, I am not going to do that because I teach against the law and this is the reason why I teach against the law. Paul could have said that, but he didn't do this. He went and did exactly what he was told. Do you, want, do you know what he did in the temple? Animal sacrifice. Animal sacrifice. Animal sacrifice. That was exactly what he did. Animal sacrifice. Because when you take the vow of the Nazarene, when you take that vow of the Nazarene, when it's time to close the vow, you have to bring an animal into the house of Yah. And you're not the one that killed the animal. You have to take it to the priest. And the priest will help you close the vow. That's why they are there. That's the job of the priest, to close the vow for you. That's what you do. Paul was doing animal sacrifice. But today, they tell you that they, you don't have to do animal sacrifice anymore, that it's done away with, that it's, it, it, it's, you no longer have to follow it. They tell you that. That's what they say. They will tell you you don't have to do animal sacrifice. But you see Paul doing it. And this was way after Christ. Way after Christ died. Way after Christ died and went back to heaven. And Paul was running around teaching people to stop keeping the law. But today, it has been presented. It's been presented to you that you are under grace. You don't have to keep the law. You don't have to follow the law. Uh, animal sacrifice is done away with. Uh, Paul was teaching that you don't have to keep the law. Paul never taught that. Paul never taught anything like that. Paul never taught anyone not to keep the law. Paul himself was keeping the law. The brethren in Jerusalem, they told Paul, they said, do this so that everybody will see that you yourself are keeping the law. Paul did not say a word. If Paul was not keeping the law and he himself was teaching against the law, he could have stopped the brethren and said, no, I don't keep the law because Christ died on the cross. Why didn't he say that? Why didn't he say that? But upon everything that I'm saying right now, there are people out there that will hear all this and still believe that we don't have to keep the law. And to that I say, may curse be upon you. You will never see good in your life. The curses, on, the curses and the evil from the Most High will be upon your head until you start keeping his law. Curse will, you will never have peace. You will never have peace of mind. You will always be in trouble. You will, always, you will never have peace of mind. Anyone that hears this truth, and still reject and refuse to keep the law. Cause will be upon your head. Look at Numbers chapter, nine, chapter, chapter 6. Numbers chapter 6 is where you see all the things you have to do to close the vow. Numbers chapter 6 is where you have to see the things you need to do. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. You can go back and read Numbers chapter 6 to see exactly what Paul did in that temple. He did animal sacrifice. Paul the Apostle did animal sacrifice. It's very clear. Numbers chapter 6. Let's start from verse 13. But I do will recommend that you read the whole chapter at your own time. I'm going to start for the sake of time from verse 13. Numbers chapter 6 verse 13 shows us what Paul did in that temple. He did animal sacrifice. Numbers chapter 6 from verse 13. This is the law for the Nazarite. When the time of their consecration has been completed, they shall be brought to the entrance of the tent of the meeting, and they shall offer their gift to Elohim, one male lamb, one male lamb, a year old, without blemish, as a burnt offering, one ewe lamb, a year old, without blemish, as a sin offering, one ram, without blemish, as an offering of well being these are all animals verse 15 a basket of unleavened bread cake of choice flour 
mixed with oil and unleavened wafer spread with oil with their grain offering and their drinks, drink offerings. Verse 16, the priest shall present them before Yahweh and offer their sin offering and burnt offering. Verse 17, and shall offer the ram as a sacrifice of well-being to Elohim, to, to Yahweh, with the basket of unleavened bread. The priest also shall make the accompanying grain, grain offering and drink. Verse 17, verse 18, Numbers 6, 18. Then the Nazareth shall shave the consecrated hair, head at the entrance of the tent of the meeting and shall take the hair from the consecrated head and put it on the fire under the sacrifice of well-being. Verse 19, the priest shall take the shoulder of the ram when it is boiled and one unleavened cake out of the basket and one unleavened wafer and shall put them in the palms of the Nazareth after they have shaved and cons shaved the consecrated head. Verse 20, then the priest shall elevate them as an elevation offering before Yahweh. They, they are holy portion for the priest together with the breast that is elevated and the tie that is offered after that the Nazareth after that the Nazareth may drink wine because when you're on that vow you don't drink wine any strong drink so Paul this is what Paul did in the temple not only did Paul did this he also paid for the other four men Paul did animal sacrifice not only did he did this he also paid for the other four men to do this now if you think that Paul will go into the house of Yah where you have the high priest listen carefully if you think that paul will go into the house of yah where you have the high priest the levite if you think that paul will walk in there and say i am here to close my vow of the nazarene that i took according to the book of numbers i want to close the vow but i'm not going to do animal sacrifice they will kill paul that's blasphemy to say that you're going to keep Yah's law but you're not going to keep it the way that the most high said in the book of numbers that you're going to keep it your own way because jesus died on the cross that would have been the end of paul the apostle that's blasphemy that would have been when they killed paul so Paul did not go to the house of Yah and say that. He went over there and he did exactly what the priest told him to do. And exactly what the priest told him to do is exactly what you read in the book of Numbers chapter 6. Paul did animal sacrifice. Way after Christ. So back to Colossians chapter, chapter 2. That's what, when Paul was telling them in Colossians chapter 2 about observing don't let anybody condemn you for observing the feast days, the Sabbath days, and the new moon days. He was encouraging them. Read from, read from verse 1. Colossians chapter, chapter 2 from verse 1 to 16. Colossians 2 verse 1 to 16. Paul was encouraging the believers, the followers of Yah, Yah's law, to make sure that nobody condemns you. Because at that point, people, are, people were beginning to fall away. And beginning to claim that we don't have to do those things. So this is how you observe uh, the new moon day. New moon day, don't go to work. How can you go to work on the new moon day when you're told to go and worship? How is that possible? It's part of the law that you have to go worship. Ezekiel 46, 1 to 3. Ezekiel 46, 1 to 3, say that the house of Yah has to be opened on the Sabbath day and on the new moon day. And the people of the land has to come in and worship on that day. Nehemiah chapter 8, 1 to 12. Nehemiah chapter 8, 1 to 12. Says that you are supposed to 
you see, you see that people of the land came and they worshipped on the new moon day. They worshipped, they went home and they ate. Before you know it, it's evening. You have to go back, go out and look for the moon. If you see the moon, then the next day is the first work day of the week. You walk for six days, you rest on the seventh day. You observe your Sabbath. The next day, you go back to work. You walk for six days, you rest on the seventh day. This is so simple, very basic. So if you are to follow the scriptures, you see that you can't just wake up on the new moon day and get ready and go to work. You're not observing the new moon day. If you do that, you wake up, you worship here, and you, you go and you worship here. If you have nobody to worship with, worship by yourself. Stay home. You cannot wake up on a new moon day and go to work. We are told to worship on that day. That's scripture. So that's how you observe the new moon day. Can you do stuff around the house? Yeah, after worship. Because you have to cook the food that you eat. You cannot cook on the Sabbath day, but you can cook on the new moon day. You cannot cook on the Sabbath day, but you can cook on the new moon day. You're not allowed to light fire on the, on the Sabbath day. Like turning off on your stove. On the, new, on the Sabbath day. You can't do that. That's Exodus 35 verse 3. Exodus 35 verse 3. You can't cook on the, on the Sabbath day. You can cook on the new moon day. If you want to cook, that's fine. You want to clean your house and do stuff on the new... After you worship though. After you worship. If you choose that you want to keep you, clean your house or... <clears throat> put your, fr your, your fringes in your clothes, that's fine. The Sabbath is a lot more stricter than the new moon day. Because you can't cook on the Sabbath. You can't light fire. You can't go to work. There's so many. Like, it's more restricted. It's a rest day. You worship on the Sabbath and you rest. Study your scriptures. Rest. New moon day is a little bit, you know, different. You still have to worship on the new moon day. And you can't be going to work when you're supposed to be at worshiping. After worship, you go home and you rest. You wait. You eat your food. And then in the evening, you go out and look for the moon. If you want to do stuff around the house while you're waiting for evening, that's fine. That's up to you. There's no law that says you shouldn't do that. What the law says, what the word of the earth says, what of the Messiah said is that you have to worship on that day. So if you do it properly, there may not even be a room for you to go to work on that day. And you shouldn't go. So that's how you observe the new moon day. That's how you observe it. It's it's not it really, you know, and if you do have your own your own business, you don't have to work for anybody. This is not a big deal. So new moon day is a feast day. Get your food. New moon day is a holiday too. It's a holiday. And uh, we have to acknowledge it. Worship, rest, wait for the moon to come out in the evening. So all praises to our Heavenly Father. Come back and uh, I want to make sure you understand what I just explained. Do you understand what I just explained? Uh, let's see. Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, I understand, but uh, so uh, now I'm asking since you say you can cook, so I'm assuming you can go to the store and buy groceries that day after you worship or stuff like that, or no? Can you do what? Like, you're allowed to, after you worship, you're allowed to, like, go to the store, buy groceries, or anything like that, or you ain't allowed to buy nothing? Well, you should get all the stuff you need ahead of time. You should get it all ahead of time because you, you should you should get those things before because if you go and worship and then get off, have to go buy groceries, when are you going to cook the food in order to eat it? So that day may actually end up being a stressful day for you. So you should get those things ahead of time. Now we do have a scripture that says that the people of people that were selling stuff in the land of Israel, the people that sell their, their sell things, they bring in their crops, their corn, 
and sell to the Israelites and, and stuff like that. They were saying, when is the Sabbath day going to be over and the new moon day that we may sell our, our corn? That's what they were saying. When, when is the Sabbath day going to be over and the new moon day that we may sell our product? What does that tell you? Nobody was buying their stuff. Because when you, and that's why I told you, like, well, that's why I'm saying that if you have to go to the grocery store to go buy your things, then you're not organized. Because you have to get the things you need before that day and have it all ready. Even if you're going to cook it, you have to get it ready before that day. So we have a situation where people were saying, when will the Sabbath day be over and the new moon day? That we may sell our corn and sell things. The reason why they were able to say that is because nobody was buying. There was nobody buying their buying their what they were selling. So they had to make that statement and ask, when will the new moon day be over and the Sabbath day that we may sell those things? Because that day on a on a or, or in a normal circumstances, in a normal circumstances. Everywhere will be shut down. It's like today. I'm with you today. By the time I, I'm done here, I go and eat. In the evening, we're supposed to go out and look. So when the new moon day is observed the right way, you wouldn't see anybody on the street. Like when you look at how the heathen observe their, uh, their July 4th and their Christmas or whatever, on that day, you almost like it's, it's dead outside. You're not going to see anybody on the street on that day. So when we observe it properly, when we observe it properly, we wouldn't be outside. So I don't see a situation where you have to go buy something on that day. But we also have the scripture that show us that people were not selling. Those that were selling stuff, they were not selling. And they had to say, when will the new moon day be up that we may sell our our things they were saying that because the people of jerusalem was not buying their crops or buying the stuff that they were selling on that day they were not buying it that's why these people had to make that statement and say when will the new moon day be over or the sabbath day that we may sell our sell our corn and sell so that you can clearly see that the israel was not buying their things uh, buying stuff on that day but if you follow the system that we've seen in the scripture i went through scriptures i went through ezekiel 46 verse 1 to 3 nehemiah chapter 8 verse 1 to 12 if you follow it that routine if you follow it that way and observe it in that manner you will see that it will really not be possible to really um it will not be possible you wouldn't even have time to be able to go out on that day you're not going to be able to have time if you follow it in that manner and observe it in you know in in that way you will not be able to uh be able to to go out so if you look at uh amos chapter 8 uh amos chapter 8 from verse 1 thou said yahweh so that Yahweh showed unto me, and behold, a basket of summer fruit. And he said, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then Yahweh said unto me, the end is, is come upon my people Israel. I will not again pass by them anymore. Verse uh, 3, Amos 8.3. And, this, and the songs of the temple shall be howling in that day, said Yahweh Elohim. There shall be many dead bodies in every place. They shall cast them forth with silence. Verse 4. Hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor of the land fall. Verse 5. Saying, When will the new moon be gone, that we may sell corn? And the Sabbath, that we may set forth wheat, making the effort small, and the shackle great, and falsifying balances by the seed? So these people that were selling stuff, they were they are asking, 
as you can see in Amos chapter 8 verse 5, they were, and the Most High is not describing good people here. These are people who are corrupt, who are oppressing people, who are, you know, doing things that the Most High did not like. So they asked a question. Yah said that they are asking, when will the new moon, when will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn and the Sabbath that we may set forth effort? So that means that nobody was buying their stuff on that day. Nobody was buying what they were selling. And they themselves understood that they couldn't sell on that day. They understood this. That's why they are making this statement. So you can clearly see Amos chapter 8 verse 5. You can clearly see it that Amos 8 verse 5 shows you that people weren't selling on that day. And people weren't buying. Those who do sell. Those that sell are saying, when will the new moon be over? That we may sell corn. And the reason why they asked that is also because nobody was buying. So even those who are selling are asking, when is this day going to be over already? So we can sell corn. So on, on that day, we don't buy on that. We don't, um, we don't sell. We don't buy on that day if we want to follow the scripture. That's why you have to get the things that you need ahead of time. You get the things that you need ahead of time and make sure that you have everything that you need so that you wouldn't have to go out and have to buy it on that day. And that's really the best thing to do. Get all the food you need, get everything you need, whatever you want to cook on the new moon day. And it's a wonderful day. It's a day of feast. It's a feast day that we eat and enjoy and just relax after we finish our our worship so uh that's what we do so if you it doesn't mean that there may not be a case sometimes one thing will lead to another the day before the the sabbath the day before the sabbath something may happen and you may not have it you may not have time to go get everything you need that can happen that something like that can happen that the day before the sabbath you may not have time to go gather and get everything you need that's a there's a possibility that something like that may happen so i'm not saying that it cannot happen sometimes you plan i'm going to do this i'm going to do this i'm going to do this and then you had everything all planned out and then on on the um on the new moon day or the the day before the last Sabbath of the month something may happen and will throw off all your plans so here you are planning that you go get everything you need for the sabbath and for the new moon and something may happen and you may not be able by the time you may finish taking care of that thing it may be too late so in that circumstances that can happen but you know one of the things that are good now kind of good not really good but the fact that you can still go to some place and buy things at night you can use that opportunity and get the things that you need so you can prepare the things that you need for the Sabbath and eat them. Then on the new moon day, after, your, after worship, you can then prepare your food. Because it's a feast day. It's a feast day. It's a time that we eat, you know, sit, eat, and just celebrate. And, you know, it's a feast day. So that's what we see in the scriptures. If it's done right, you wouldn't have to go buy anything like today i don't have to go buy anything because i pretty much have everything i need i make sure i have water have food have everything that i need and if you don't have it on the new moon day you can cook it on the new moon day but according to the scripture we see in amos chapter 8 verse 5 you can clearly see that those who are selling something in the land of israel they were not selling on that day and they themselves were asking oh when is the new moon going to be over that we may sell our corn so they are definitely not selling on the new moon day and people of the land was definitely not buying. It's best to get the things you need before that day. Going to work on the new moon day, if you keep it properly, you wouldn't go to work on the new moon day. If you keep it properly, you wouldn't have to go buy, but get the things that you need. Just get the things that you need and make sure you have them. So that's what we see here uh, when it comes to the new moon. Uh, I pray and hope that you will follow these laws and the commandment and follow them um, 
according to the scriptures the answer i'm giving you i'm trying to give you according to the scripture i'm not going to sit here and tell you that you can do this or you can't do this without being able to show you so you can see for yourself so if you doubt or you have concern about buying something on the new moon day we have emos chapter 8 verse 5 uh are you going to go to work on the new moon day we have the scripture that say you have to worship on that day and the people of the land worship and after that you eat your feast so that's a day of rest basically so all praises to our heavenly father do you understand what i explained yes sir okay so do you still have question about that is there something that you still uh Do you still, I mean, do you still have question, any question concerning this? Uh, no, it's okay. I just got to plan better next time. Three days straight, so yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's best to plan. That's why I try, I try to help. I try to send out the notification. If you have the Coming Kingdom app, I send the notification. Uh, in that notification, I let you know, I think about maybe four or five days ago, I sent in the notification to to let you know that the new moon day is going to be today uh i i did that ahead of time and then the day before the sabbath i sent out another notif notification letting you know that the next day is going to be the sabbath so you can get everything that you need i always advise that you get food for two days get the things you need for two days uh the good thing is that as soon as, as long as you have what you need you can cook them you can cook them on the new moon, you know. So that's a good thing. Uh, that's a feast day. If we observe, if we are doing this correctly, uh, if we are in a situation that we're supposed to be in, on a new moon day, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a day of, it's a feast day. So I can invite you. If I invite you and you come, there's going to be drinks. There's going to be drinks. There's going to be food. It's a feast day. We eat and we drink. And then we wait until the evening. If we see the moon, then we go back home and sleep and wake up in the morning and go back to work. That's the way it works. So all praises to our Heavenly Father. Uh, for those that still have questions about this, uh, you are still more than welcome to. You can contact me. You can ask. And I will try my best to go through the scripture and show you the answers according to the scriptures. I give you all the glory and all the honor. And I really wish and pray and encourage you to observe these laws to keep these laws, to observe the new moon days, to observe the Sabbath days. The Sabbath day comes seven days after the new moon day. So when your God told you to observe the Sabbath on the new uh, to observe the Sabbath on the seventh day, when he says to observe the Sabbath on the seventh day, that, that is seven days from the new moon day. The Sabbath is seven days from the new moon day. You observe your first Sabbath. The moon will look 50% full, seven days from the new moon. You observe your Sabbath, you then the next day you go to work and you work for six days seven days after that the moon will look 100 percent full on a full moon you observe your sabbath the next day you go to work and you work for six days you observe your second your third sabbath it's very simple very very simple and if you have any question about that you're more than welcome to to ask so there's very little information out there about the new moon day most people don't observe the new moon day most people don't they only talk about the sabbath day but they keep the sabbath day on saturday they keep the sabbath day on saturday and on sunday that's not the sabbath day the sabbath day is based on the moon the new moon day begins the month the new moon day begins the month seven days from that is the, is the sabbath day you observe your sabbath the moon will be 50 percent full indicating to you so this is very simple and very basic and uh, I thank our Heavenly Father for giving us the opportunity to go back into all this and do it the way He wanted it to be done. I thank our Heavenly Father and I pray and hope that everyone will go back and begin to observe this the way that the Most High wanted to, wants us to observe them. And if you do have any question about it, you're more than welcome to contact me. Uh, thank our Heavenly Father for everything and thank you, brother, for asking the question. All praises to our Heavenly Father. Thank you.